Hi, everybody. I hope everybody's doing well today. At least the sun's out a little bit. It's a little bit cooler, but well, I guess that's better than what it could be. So today I am going to be talking to you about the Ancestry Library that's available on the library website. <clears throat> Usually this library is only available to use within the library, but it has been pushed out to where you can actually use it at home. So I'm going to demonstrate how to get there and some features that you can use um, to use it at home to get some information. So the first thing that you will do is if you go to our library website, the Salem Public Library at salem.lib.oh.us, um, you'll come to the main page that looks like this. And on this main page, you're going to go to the top where it says research. If you just kind of hover over that research, it will give you a drop down menu. And in that menu, that's where you'll find the ancestry. And it does say in library only, which it normally is in library only, but now you can use it from home. So don't get scared away by the in library only tag there. So just click it. And when you click it, you'll get a pop up on the left. It says click here to, to connect to Ancestry Library. And all you do is you just click that link. It will take you directly into the Ancestry Library then. And when you're in the Ancestry Library, there are so many different places to search and look for things. I'm just going to try to go over some of the main points because if I went through everything, we would be going on for a long time today. But I'll give you the main points so later you can go on and try searching yourself and um, looking for more information that way. But this is what the main page looks like. As you see across the top, you'll see different tags that you can click on to go to different things. I'm going to show you this main screen first and then we'll move on to those across the top. So if I scroll down on this main page a little bit, of course they have the big button right there in the center. This is begin searching that you could just automatically click and start searching. Um, or they have these nice quick links on the bottom. And there's a lot of these are probably the most popular ones that people use to search for things and those are on the main page here. They also have census records listed over here that they go back to 1790. And if you're looking for someone within certain year ranges, you can just click on those to do searches specific through the census records. Now, when you're in the library, normally you have the receive records at home button to be able to save them. But now you can save them directly to your computer as you're using them, you can print them. Um, you can also use the save records at home. And what that will do is it will send you an email with this information. But right over here, this is a video that explains how to do it. So if you want to email to you, go ahead and click view video and it'll walk you through. It's like a one minute uh, tutorial on how to do that. So that's a nice resource that's built in if you need help. And since we're talking about resources, I'm going to show you up here at the top, the Learning Center. This is very nice too. Um, it's built into this page and it has different types of ways if you're just getting started in using Ancestry or trying to search family information. It has a lot of great information here. These are all clickable links and it gives you census tips here and then it has other things over here like using religious records, military, cemetery searching. So if you really want to get into this, you can go back and look through some of this information. It will give you a lot more details on how to search very specific for things. As you can see, it talks about there's immigration, military, and then ethnic backgrounds. So if you know some, you know, maybe minor details about something, you think, oh, I think they came over from another country, you could search for it that way. Or if you know they're in the military, you can access military records. And I'll show you a couple of examples of those here in just a second. So first off, let's go ahead and go back here to the main page and we're going to just click begin search. It's the same thing pretty much as typing this search up here at the top. When you come to this page, you have the ability to put in the name of people, first and last name, maybe the city, county, state, country where they have lived. And if you know the birth year, you could put it in here. 
The other thing you can do is if you click this little cal calculator and you can put approximate ages and certain years also. So it will narrow down your search that way. There are more options here under the search. If you see where it says show more options, if you click that, that gives you a bunch more opportunities to give specific details for what you're looking for. So say you know uh, the, the father, you can put the father's name on there. If you know a sibling on there, you can add the sibling. So you could have all of these listed here and put more specific details to narrow down your search. If you decide you don't want to use that, you just click the X and it will close those boxes. You could go by events. Uh, if you know the year or location an event happened, like a marriage or, you know, anything that happened that you know that this person might be in, you could do it that way. Birth, marriage, death, um, place they lived in. You can be all specific with those kind of things there. Now, if you know, say, you know, they worked in the steel mill or whatever, you could type something like that in there for an occupation. Or you, I know they lived on this street, Main Street in Salem, you could put that in there for something more specific. You can narrow it down by male or female and also race and nationality, if you know that background information. It will, if these are checked, see how they're checked, it will include these four things in the searches, historical records, stories and publication, family trees, photos and maps. And when you click the search, it will search for all those specific things that you put in here. Here's another way to search. You can search by location. So if you can see here, if I hover over this map, it, it shows how many collections are in each state that it's pulling information from. Ohio actually has a lot. There's 485 collections. You can click on this and it will make the map bigger and it'll kind of give you the results over here on the right. And it'll show, um, it will show you how many records are available in each thing. So the World War II draft in 1942, it's a military collection that has tons and tons of records available. And you can go down through the Quaker meeting records, all different kind of records just within the state of Ohio. And you can do the same thing with any other state that you, know, you have information for, or you think uh, someone lived or you want information. So it, there is a lot of information out there going by state or you can go by country even. So those are some great resources for searching. Also listed it down the right here, it shows you spe uh, specific special collections that you can click on. If you have a marriage certificate or you have birth information or census, uh, there's just a huge long list down here on the right side that you can click on. Church directories, taxes, um, reference, maps and photos. So like I said, there's a lot to dig into here, but I'm going to try to keep it fairly basic so you can see. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a basic search just so you can see what it looks like. And I'm going to use a very generic name like John Smith. Um, and I'm not going to put in city, state, anything or birth year. I'm just going to put the name in and click search just so I can show you what some different types of records look like. So when it comes up, as you can see, the first one is not really the same name that I typed in. And as you go down here, there's all different types of results that come up. Um, John D, John Jones, tons. So that's why it would be important when you go ahead and type in, if you know something specific about the person is put that into the search. But the reason I did this is so I can show you the different type of records. The first one that comes up here, it's a link and it says military and it even says view image. If it says view image, that means that there is a picture of something included in this record that you can take a look at. So let's go ahead and look at this military record first. So it comes up with the name and it tells the information about the individual birth date, uh, birthplace, street address, uh, residence, that kind of information that comes up. And then if there's a picture, it'll come up here. It'll say view and then you're going to click it and it's kind of cool because you can go back and see some of this information. Um, it was all handwritten. Of course, it was 1888, but you can go down through here and look at their draft card. This is a draft card of this person. It's an actual copy of the card. So say this was the record that you were looking for. You can go up here and click the save. And if you click the save, you can click send image home 
And if you do that, you will get this box. And this is where you'll put your email address in and it will email you a copy of this record. So you put your email in and you click send email and you'll get a copy of the record. If you wanna save it to your computer, you can click the save and then click save to this computer. And then basically what I did is downloaded the picture for me down here on my computer. Over on the right are some of the controls. Uh, there's a, a zoom in, as you can see I'm zooming in and I can kind of move it over so I can see it a little closer. I can zoom out. Um, if there's more than one record, you can hit the arrow and it moves to the next record. So um, you can see here, it's kind of neat. It's very user friendly and I'm gonna go into another record so you can see what it looks like also. So let me go ahead and go back. And um, I'm gonna go back to my results that I first typed in just to show you. The, not, the next one here is it's a birth, marriage, and death certificate record. So I'm gonna click on that. As you can see, there's no picture involved. So it'll come up and say no image, it's only a text. And so it will give the information uh, about this. This is a marriage information, uh, it shows who, John Smith married, the age, and where it took place in the date. So marriage records, uh, depending on how old they are or if they actually have a picture, if the marriage license would come up here if they had it. If not, you're gonna at least get the information. And one thing is if you scroll down a little bit further, it will give you the source, source information where they got it from. So if you need to dig further, you can maybe find something out from this information below it if you need more source information about the record that you're looking at. I'm gonna go back again and show you one more just so you can see another example. And this one is an immigration uh, record. And it, it tells you at the top where all the records come from, this original document. And then it also has that site, site source citation below it, sorry. And then you can even have more links to click on. Anything that's blue is a clickable link in here. So I'm gonna click view. And when I click view, you'll see right here is a record. And this is a comes from the naturalization record index. It's really kind of cool. Um, you know, this is basically like a piece of paper that I've just typed on um, that has that information on it. So it's pretty neat to, to see some of these older documents and how they were stored and, and that kind of thing. Okay, so let me go back to the, the original um, search. So most of the rest of these are immigration and travel ones. And like I said, the, the records for your sake weren't specific to the person I was looking for. I just wanted to show you some examples, but over here on the left-hand side, if I wanted just information from newspapers and publications, I could click them and then they would show me anything that I found um, about that person. So uh, this was something that was in the Virginia newspaper. So it, you can sort it by periodicals, mag magazines, newspapers. You can sort it by anything that was published in the past. Uh, you can even go to categories over here. You can see this uh, 3,985 results. So. Um, there's lots and lots of details and information and it will probably take you some time to sort through some things to be able to find information for these people. Uh, another thing I want to share, I'm going to go back to the home page real quick. If you scroll down to these quick links that I talked about at the beginning, there is um, some publications on the public members trees. And what these are, they're family trees that people have put together and published on here. Now this information is just public resources that they have put together. They have a disclaimer that, you know, maybe everything isn't spelled correctly or um, may not be put to, together the way they, they do, but it is something that someone has come up with and put on here to share their family tree. So let me show you an example of a family tree and like I said, with this, you can be very specific also. And you can see here, there's 982,000 family trees for John Smith. So if you're looking for a specific family member, you're gonna have to probably narrow your search down just a little bit more 
But I'm just going to show you an example. So say you put this in, you can see on here, it comes up with the family tree member. This would be the people that came up, you know, they might put their family name like Simmons family tree or uh, different things. It depends how they wanted to put it on there. If it says photo, you know that there are photos involved in this family tree. The name of the people and the birth information may be here, and then it has the parental information over here. So I'm just going to click this one just to show you an example of what it looks like. And now this is a public uh, family tree that's been posted. And the first page, it's got the picture and it's got information on it as far as where this person was born and where he died and even has some map information that you can click on. All of this is clickable information about the family and here's even pictures and it's you can scroll down through it. So it's kind of like a timeline that starts on the first page under life story. And then if you click on the facts, it gives you more information as far as the family goes. So say I want to I click on one of these things. So if I click on this and it says view, it will pop up any information that is involved with it. If I, if I click on another one, if there's information, it will pop up. Say I want information about the family, it will give me information on how this all ties together. So if I'm looking at these different things here, if I click on this, it will show me where the information has come from that is linked to it. So this is where the information came about this. As you can see the little squiggle lines that connect uh, the people and where the information come, came to make this tree. Every time you click on one, if there's information, see it'll show, this is what the census of 1921 showed this information about this person. So um, there's a lot of really cool things here. Uh, it'll take you some time to go through, but it, it'll be, it's a neat thing to go back and, and see it. So I wanted to show you this picture. In the gallery, they have a picture of the census. And this is from, it could be a source that you could find directly through the search yourself. But one thing about this, it's really nice is you can see this is handwritten and it, some of it is very hard to read. So what they have done with Ancestry is if, see how my cursor, I move it down on the line and whatever line I'm on, it will give me a little pop up and it'll say what it says, it says Scotland. Now me, I couldn't read it unless I zoomed in really close, but it is, it's really nice that they have put this feature on here to be able to read some of these older handwritten records, because some of them are kind of hard to read. But you can go look at relationship, um, the township, just all different things. So it's nice that if you see that pink line, just look at it and it will pop up and say what it says in there. Of course, I mean, you can zoom in closer it's still very hard to read, but it does give you more information at the top, like um, language, religion, that kind of thing. And then um, you'll know what these columns all say. So that's, that's a very nice way to read the records. And it's kind of cool too. Um, so as far as the searches go, you have a lot of options to search and a lot of options to see family trees. You see the ones that are already created for you. Another option is you have message boards, and this is a neat way to reach out to people. There might be someone looking for someone that you're looking for. You can go to categories. You can look through uh, cemeteries, military, genealogies, all, all different things, and read their posts and say, um, I need help with this. Do you know what this is? If you're someone that likes this researching and does so, you might have an answer for someone, or you could answer a uh, a question of someone else. So all you'd have to do is type it in and click search and see what comes up as far as questions or information. And that's under the messaging board. One more thing that I want to show you today is the charts and forms. They have provided you with the ability to download these forms. And when you download these forms, you can write your own information in them. So say you wanted to do an ancestral chart with information. This is a downloadable form. It gives you a place to put all the information in, you hand write it in, or you could even probably type it if you wanted to, but it's a PDF. Um, just click the download button or the print and you can print it off and be able to use it. 
for what you're what you're working on. Um, I, there's also a research calendar and correspondence record, research extract, family group sheet, source summary. So they give you a lot of things that you could use, and there's even uh, census forms informations information. So if you click on that, you could download a census form if you want that information. Uh, under new collections, these are all of these are updated often. If they are updated or new, it will say on the right hand side whether if it's a new correct. Uh, new record or if it's just been updated. So if you're looking for something specific, um, there might be a new or updated record, record. They're always updating them all of the time. So Ancestry is a great way for you to do a little research on your family and um, just maybe you want to see who lived in your house before you did or maybe you want to look at military records. But there's a lot of really cool information that you could get from here and take some time to search it yourself. It's pretty user friendly. And I've kind of just hit the tip of the iceberg here, just showing you some things just to be able to get you started. So I hope that was helpful that dig into this and check it out and, and do some research from home. Let me know if you have any questions. Thanks.